again, have you ever had to continue asking yourself over and over now what comes next? Does the person hitting the wall continue what they're doing and keep keeping track of what me, their neighbor, not once in my life since I was a baby. Has anyone stalked me, harassed me, and bullied me as much as now? And never in my life, even when the Cordoma tumor was so bad and so undiagnosed, I had to hurt my voice. I had to hurt my brain and mind to concentrate and focus enough to explain to doctors what was happening to me at the time. And now there's a group of people who are a community. They are a social friend network. And I'm scared of them. I'm frightened. I'm uneasy anytime I open my door to go into the world. And not only the world, but what's out there in the world. And they walk around proud and they walk around tall and they walk around so friendly. But don't pause, don't recognize a spontaneous sound from a singer's voice or a music song being made for shake, dance, and rock and roll. And they call the police and the police come and they say, do you need emergency help? They said, you wanna kill yourself. They said I had a glass bottle in my hand and I was gonna kill somebody else too. And the video camera has the only opportunity for me to not be homeless. All for satisfaction? Are, are they just being satisfied? I mean, are they getting excited with doing this to a person that lives in the apartment complex that they rent a room in, that they rent? Are they getting some benefit from me being harassed, made To be a villain? To hurt people? Have you ever considered how 
much damage it can do to a person when they have a word on their arm and they have another word and they have another word and they have a Gandhi sentence that says you must be the change you wish to see in the world and the person with the Gandhi tattoo has the videos of the thumping and the hitting and the smacking and the harassment Has to look out into the world from a window I can't even go up to because I'm so scared to go out there again. And be ready. Because these are the same people that live in the shelter. These are the same people that go and do drugs on the street and come up to me and call me a evil bastard, a bitch. Say they're going to kill me? Have you ever had a group of people team up and start their own psychiatric clinic? And have a landlord and a social worker and a mental health organization not only assist them, but support them. And those people slowly and slowly and slowly put a human in a room like a monkey. And the monkey sits in the room like a little rat. And they hit the monkey's wall and they stare at the rat in the hallway. And the rat monkey crawls out and can't go any further because one of them are watching. Crawled back in side of the only world remaining with no police with no drugs. But found no shelter, no home, no dignity in the ashram built for the good of not only the body, brain, and mind, but to give the heart warmth when there's no heat and to give the soul rest When there's no sleep available. There's no words to describe trying to get legally approved for assisted suicide. 
in having the assisted suicide disrupted by the people causing the conditions for no freedom. In having the disruption of freedom videotaped, explained, shown with tears, sweat, blood, marks on the hand from trying to build a home inside of an apartment to withstand tobacco smokers who drink liquor all day and carry Pabst Blue Ribbon cans with them up and down the stairs and stand out front and watch with their friend who goes in their neighbor's door whenever who's a war veteran and she's about 20 or 30 years younger and they don't do paperwork. They don't have the police say, hey, your music and your weed and you're kicking in the doors need to be enough for you to know you are not one, two, explain the rules in the building where you smoke your pot right in front of the front door and make a garden to let everyone know you fought hard and you deserve to have this world to yourself and he knows awareness and has attention from his brain, mind, and body. And she has pepper spray and she has a service animal and she has a phone to communicate with them and they are Capitol Hill, Seattle, Washington. And I am an applicant for assisted suicide. And I am that. I am humble, compassionate, and not only begging for the harassment to stop, but also saying Leave me alone. And these people don't let those words have any meaning and have decided to target me for their purpose and world. And when I'm talked about as someone's world, when I'm targeted, then I deserve to be allowed to die. I did not survive cancer to be bullied and harassed. I did not choose surgery to remove a tumor to be called suicidal and stand in front of a camera and have to hit stop 